In a world of magic, where everyone naturally uses it, magic is a gift from the gods. It determines status, and those with magic have a mark on their face as a sign. But there's someone different in this magical place. His name is Mash, and he doesn't fit in because he doesn't have magic or a mark. Instead, he's strong, with big muscles. Mash and his father live together in the forest. Every time Mash comes home, he can't figure out whether to push or pull the door, so he ends up breaking it. His dad gets really annoyed. When Mash tries to fix the door, he always ruins it even more, leaving his father extremely frustrated. His father asks if Mash has completed his exercise routine for the day. Mash, curious, asks why he's always being told to build his muscles. His dad remains silent every time. Finally, his father says he needs to go out for a bit, and warns Mash not to wander the streets while he's gone. After his dad leaves, Mash sneaks into town. Today is a special day, and he can't miss it. It's the day his favorite cream puffs are for sale, and he loves them more than anything. As he walks through the town, he sees everyone using magic for their work. Even the shoe shiners are using magic to polish shoes. Mash can't help but feel a little jealous. Soon, he reaches the cream puff shop. He tells the cashier he wants seven of the special cream puffs and hands over his coins. But he squeezed them so hard with his strong hands that they bent. Seeing the cashier's stunned face, he quickly straightens them again. The cashier, still shocked but recovering, hands over the cream puffs. Just then, a gust of wind blows off Mash's hat. The magicians around him freeze, staring as if he's a monster. They see his face has no magical mark, meaning he has no magic. Meanwhile, at the police station, Chief Brad receives a report about a man without a magic mark. Mash doesn't know how serious this is yet. He only notices the increasing noise around him. Just then, he accidentally bumps into a police officer, getting cream puff on the officer's uniform. The officer is furious and starts yelling at Mash, asking how he's going to pay for the ruined clothes. Mash says he'll wash them and tries to take the uniform off, but he ends up tearing it, leaving the officer in shock. Just then, the angry policeman's boss, Brad, arrives on the scene. He's puzzled to see the officer without a shirt, but then he recognizes Mash, the boy without a magic mark that was just reported. As he's about to investigate further, Mash's dad suddenly rushes out and pulls his son away. Brad summons a magic bird to follow them. When they get home, Mash's dad is furious. He yells at Mash for not listening to him but softens when he sees Mash's sad face. Still, there must be a punishment, so he makes Mash redo his morning training. After Mash leaves, his dad spots the magic bird outside the window. Brad and his men barge in, demanding he hand over Mash. Meanwhile, in the forest, Mash completes his training in just two and a half minutes, thinking about the cream puffs waiting at home. As he approaches the door, he forgets whether to push or pull it, but this gives him a chance to overhear the conversation inside. Brad is using magic to interrogate Mash's dad. In this world, people with Without magic are not allowed to live, as they are considered a threat to the magical community. No matter how hard Brad interrogates him, Mash's dad refuses to reveal his son's location. He remembers his own past, being looked down upon for his weak magic. No one ever needed him, and he even considered ending his life. But then he found the baby Mash, abandoned because he had no magic mark. Feeling a connection, he adopted the child and vowed to be his father. When Mash's dad realizes his son is outside, he screams for him to run. The police hear and realize Mash is nearby. Brad starts beating Mash's dad to silence him, but the old man is prepared to die to protect his son. Just as Brad is about to deliver the final blow, Mash bursts in, knocking one of the officers flying. The officer with the torn uniform tries to get revenge but ends up with his second uniform torn by Mash. Mash slaps him repeatedly, furious at how they treated his only family. Brad, however, is not impressed. To him, Mash is just a muggle, without magic. He brags that he'll finish Mash off in three seconds using a spell that once banished a dragon. But Mash slaps the magic away, shocking Brad. He tries again with an even more powerful spell, but Mash calmly slaps it away too. They go back and forth, with Mash playing with Brad's magic like it's a game of volleyball, even showing off his skills. Finally, Mash picks up his dad's magic wand. Brad assumes Mash can use magic and sets up a defensive shield. But Mash just throws the wand, breaking the shield and leaving a cut on Brad's face. The action is daring and unexpected, showing that in this magical world, Mash has his own way of fighting, even without the power of magic. 
Mash's dad is incredibly surprised by his son's strength. He'd only wanted Mash to build muscle to protect himself, but he never expected Mash to be this powerful. Suddenly, Brad starts laughing and offers a deal. If Mash agrees to his request, he'll leave them both alone. Brad tells them every year, the most outstanding student is chosen to be the divine visionary, a person that everyone worships. Brad wants Mash to go to the Magic Academy and become this divine visionary. If he's chosen, it means that he's been recognized by the gods, and all Brad wants in return is the money and power that come with the title. He'll secretly help Mash, of course. If Mash refuses, he and his dad will be hunted down for the rest of their lives. After thinking it over, Mash agrees. So in order to live a peaceful life with his dad, Mash, who has no magical abilities, heads to the Magic Academy to take the entrance exam. Brad and Mash's dad create a fake mark on his face to hide the fact that he has no magic. Before the exam starts, the examiner, Claude, observes this year's new students. He feels very satisfied as he sees the anxious students waiting on the field. Most of them are from noble families or children of high-ranking officials. Many are studying or taking care of their magic wands. But then, something strange catches Claude's eye. Mash is standing on the open ground, repeatedly lifting a barbell. Claude is confused, wondering why someone would be exercising muscles for a magic exam. He thinks he must have seen it wrong, so he looks again, and to his shock, Mash is actually doing squats while reading a book about building muscles. Claude feels that Mash is being disrespectful to magic, but he doesn't worry too much, thinking that Mash will be eliminated soon. After composing himself, Claude suddenly appears in the center of the examination field. With his cool introduction, the students immediately recognize him as a young and powerful master of high-level magic. With a wave of his hand, he magically creates the examination desks with paper and pens. When the students receive their papers, they're stunned. The text on the paper is moving. It turns out that Claude has cast a spell requiring students to use magic to arrange the text neatly. Mash's dad and Brad think for sure that Mash is going to fail the test. After all, Mash doesn't know any magic. Mash looks at the moving text on his paper and warns it to stop moving or else he'll get angry. When the text continues to move, Mash breaks his pen in anger. The words on the paper seem to sense his threat, and they immediately become normal, lining up neatly. Mash's dad and Brad, watching from the shadows, are amazed. Quickly, Mash hands in his paper. Seeing the neat arrangement of the text, Claude is also stunned beyond belief. In the exams that follow, Mash, who doesn't have any magic, passes with ease. The second task is to use magic to make a massive stone float in the air. But instead of using magic, Mash secretly sticks a finger under the stone and lifts it up, making it look as if it's floating in the air. The third task in the test is to walk on water using magic. But Mash, who doesn't have any magic, decides to run across the water instead. He believes that if he runs fast enough, gravity won't affect him. As he passes all the tests, the other candidates scream in amazement. Claude isn't pleased. He raises his magic wand, and in an instant, the ground shakes, and a huge maze filled with countless traps rises from the ground. The candidates are told they must get through this tricky maze within 30 minutes, but Mash just shrugs and says that this test looks pretty easy. Suddenly, a girl named Lemon Irvine appears next to him. She blushes and invites Mash to work together, thinking two heads are better than one. Mash thinks this makes sense, but soon realizes that the girl is quite clumsy. A small rock can trip her up, and she's soon surrounded by demons. Anything that could be a trap, she steps right on. Suddenly, a scream rings out, and Mash realizes they don't have much time. He takes off but Lemon uses magic to bind Mash's hands and feet. She apologizes to him and says she can't let him reach the endpoint for some reasons. Mash, however, doesn't bother arguing. He uses brute strength to break free and runs off. Just as Lemon prepares to chase him, a sphinx blocks her way, and she must answer a riddle to pass. The riddle is simple. What has four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening? Lemon plans to use her magic to defeat the sphinx-like monster that's blocking her path. But before she can even begin to chant the spell, her magic wand is knocked out of her hand by the creature. The monster continues to repeat its riddle, demanding an answer from her. Lemon is terrified, her legs trembling in fear. She thinks that maybe this is the price for deceiving Mash, and feeling guilty, she simply gives up fighting. Just in the nick of time, a voice rings out. That kind of creature doesn't even exist, does it? The monster falls to the ground, defeated. Lemon can't figure out why Mash has come back to save her, but he explains that he just felt sorry for her. Everyone has their troubles, after all. 
something stirs inside Lennon. It's a fluttering feeling, a feeling of being touched by Mash's kindness. But at the same time, she feels even more guilty because now there's no time left to finish the test. The examiner, watching the clock and noticing that Mash hasn't emerged yet, starts to smirk. But his gloating doesn't last long. A loud crashing sound suddenly fills the air. When the dust settles, there stands Mash, with Lemon beside him. Everyone is stunned. Mash has made it through, breaking straight through the walls. Some students quickly accuse Mash of cheating by breaking through the walls. Mash doesn't know what to say in his defense. But Lemon can't take it anymore. Even when the examiner, Claude, threatens her, she speaks up. She reveals that Claude told her to slow Mash down so she could pass the test. Her family is poor, and she needs to get into the school, so she went along with Claude's plan. Mash only fell behind because he was trying to save her. Claude, seeing his plan exposed, comes clean. He admits he wants to eliminate Mash because, in his eyes, Mash's lowly bloodline makes him unfit for the school. Claude then declares Mash and Lemon disqualified but challenges them to fight him if they disagree. Mash is furious. He storms up to Claude and snaps his wand, leaving Claude shocked and scared. Just in time, Headmaster Wahlberg shows up to stop the chaos and announces that he'll oversee the next test. He takes Mash to a big hall filled with other magic teachers. Wahlberg has prepared a final interview for Mash. If he passes, he will be considered qualified for the school. First, Mr. Wahlberg asks why Mash picked this school. Mash quickly says he wants a calm life with his dad. Some teachers don't like this answer, but Mr. Wahlberg is okay with it. Next Next, Mr. Wahlberg asks why Mash tried to save his friend Lemon, even if it meant he might not pass the exam. Mash explains that he did it so he wouldn't regret not helping. This answer lets Wahlberg know that Mash is the type of person who doesn't consider the consequences, like how strong the Sphinx might be or whether he could even break the walls. However, Mash states that he would have done it anyway, even if he had considered these things. Wahlberg tells Mash that his lack of caution might be because he still doesn't know the ways of the world. Many creatures are stronger than Mash. Mr. Wahlberg wonders what Mash would do if he had to face someone really powerful, like himself. Then, he shows off a strong magic spell that scares some teachers. He explains that this magic can transfer the soul of a person's most cherished one into a doll. When he does it, Mash's father falls down because his soul is in the doll now. A sharp spike begins to slowly descend toward a doll. Wahlberg says if the knife pierces the doll, the person's soul can't go back. Mash immediately throws a punch at the knife. Not only is the knife completely undamaged, but his arm is injured as a result. Without giving up, Mash grabs the blade with his hands, trying to keep it from moving down any further. He tells Wahlberg that he can't keep the magic spell going forever, so they'll just have to see who can last longer. Wahlberg then talks about how power, like magic, can be used for good things or bad things. It all depends on who's using it. He says it's important to take care of people who are weak and make sure strong people do what's right. This is something called Noblesse Oblige. Wahlberg believes that Mash can be a good person with magic. Then, as Wahlberg takes away the magic, the hall that was once incredibly dark becomes clear and bright in an instant. Wahlberg says he's sorry for testing Mash like that, but Mash isn't upset at all. He even answers Wahlberg's earlier question, saying that if they were to have a real fight, he would knock Wahlberg out with his fists. Some teachers think that's a rude thing to say, but Wahlberg just smiles. He likes Mash's spirit, and he welcomes Mash into the school. At the same time, his father's soul returns to his body. In the first magic class, the teacher's first lesson is on how to unlock locks. It's really quite simple. All you need to do is pour your magical intent into the lock, and you can unlock it in a second. The teacher is ready for everyone to start practicing, but then Mash just breaks the lock open with his hands. His face even looks like he's expecting praise. The teacher is stunned and stammers that this is a magic school, a place to learn magic, not brute force. Watching him getting scolded, the boy sitting next to Mash named Finn feels panic. Wanting a calm school life, he prays that he doesn't have anything to do with Mash. After class, he heads to the dormitory, wondering who his roommate will be. After some effort, he finally finds the dormitory, but the door is nowhere to be found. Turning around, he discovers that Mash is holding the door in his hands. It turns out they're roommates too. After the two introduce themselves to each other, Finn starts to think that Mash is pretty normal. That is until Mash begins to introduce every single one of his muscles. He even has names for each of them. This unheard of behavior makes Finn find Mash quite frightening. Mash then curiously asks Finn how one can become a divine visionary. Finn explains that it's all related to a student's daily performance, from exam grades to extracurricular activities. The Academy awards gold, silver, and bronze coins based on these results, 
and the student who collects the most gold coins can become a divine visionary. Though it sounds easy, Mash can't help but recall the prejudice he's faced from examiners and teachers. He starts to worry, but soon puts that concern behind him. Through this conversation, he believes Finn is a good person and even shares his cream puff with him. It's the next day at magic school, and the teacher is teaching the class how to ride on a broom. She tells the students they need to put magic energy into the broom and make it fly by saying the word, fly. Then, she lets the students try it for themselves. Mash can't even pick up the broom without magic power. This naturally leads to ridicule from other students. Annoyed, he stomps his foot on the ground, and the broom jumps into his hand. Then he tells it to fly. One student is surprised but says Mash cheated because the broom flew before he told it to. The teacher then says they are going to see how fast they can fly. The student challenges Mash to a race. The loser has to do whatever the winner says at school. Mash says yes, but he doesn't know that the other boy is really good at riding a broom. When the teacher says go, Mash wins the race in just a flash, leaving the other boy in shock. He didn't even have time to move. The teacher can't believe it and says it's a new world record. The other students are surprised too, but they didn't really see what happened. But Finn saw everything. Mash actually threw the broom out and then dove after it. He used the air to slow down and chase the broom, and it looked like he was flying. Everyone else saw a blur. The boy can't believe what happened. Mash tells him they can forget about the agreement because the boy looks kind of sad. This makes the boy really angry, and he's about to yell, but then his mouth is suddenly sewn shut. The person who did it is Lloyd Cavill. Lloyd, wearing a smiling face, apologizes to Mash for his friend's reckless behavior. He then tells Mash to wait for him at that spot after school. Then he leaves with his friend, taking him to a secluded corner where no one can see them. Once they're alone, Lloyd's temper flares up. He beats up his friend, clearly angry at how the plan has gone wrong. It turns out that the trouble Mash has faced was intentionally caused by Lloyd, and he's furious that his friend couldn't even handle such a simple task. At the same time, Mash and his friend Finn are walking back to the dormitory. Finn tells Mash that Lloyd is the son of a high-ranking member at the Bureau of Magic. People who go against him often get expelled. Even the school's vice principal is close to him. Mash doesn't seem to pay attention to the warning. Soon, it's after school, and Mash doesn't meet Lloyd at the playground as they had agreed. Instead, Mash gets totally caught up in making cream puffs and feels like he forgot something. Unbeknownst to him, Lloyd waits at the playground for two and a half hours, fuming that he's been stood up for the first time. The next day, Mash opens his backpack to find his textbook tattered. Lloyd's friends smirk nearby. Finn just lowers his head. Then Lloyd approaches Mash, asking why he didn't show up for their appointment. Mash honestly says he forgot, which makes Lloyd even angrier. Lloyd then tells Mash that if he listens to him, he can help him become a divine visionary. Mash believes him without hesitation. However, Lloyd makes it clear that it won't be for free. So, Mash spends the day carrying things and shining Lloyd's shoes. The next day, Mash's books are ruined again. He decides to share a book with Finn. Though Finn initially wants to refuse, Mash quickly sits beside him, giving him a homemade cream puff. Mash is happy to have a friend like Finn, but Finn doesn't seem happy at all. After school, Lloyd purposely spills water on the floor and makes Mash clean it. Mash does as he's told but scrubs so hard that he polishes the floor like a mirror. Meanwhile, Lloyd calls Finn outside. He tells Finn to go and burn Mash's school uniform next, simply because ruining Mash's textbook no longer interests him. It turns out that everything was done under Lloyd's direction. But Finn, touched by Mash's sincerity, says he doesn't want to trick Mash anymore. Lloyd becomes furious and hurts Finn with magic. At that moment, Mash is coming to return a book to Finn and sees Finn being beaten up. He rushes over to ask Finn what happened, but Finn feels more ashamed than cared for. He chokes back tears, confessing that he was the one who followed Lloyd's orders and tore up Mash's book. Because he was afraid of Lloyd, he never dared to resist. But Mash still treated him as a friend, and he's truly sorry for what he's done. Seeing Mash with a gloomy expression, Lloyd seems unconcerned, his face full of indifference. Mash then walks over to Lloyd and grabs his head, smashing it to the floor, stating that Lloyd is the one who needs to apologize. No one can believe someone would dare hit the son of a high-ranking official. After all, it could lead to expulsion. Seeing Lloyd unconscious, Mash suddenly realizes he might have caused trouble. At that moment, the vice principal named Farman, who has been watching from the shadows, suddenly appears. Even though he knows everything, he deliberately twists the facts, accusing Mash of bullying Lloyd and even wanting to expel Mash and Finn. But Mash doesn't let him get away with it and delivers an e-strike to his chin. The vice principal gets punched 
punch too, to the onlookers, this is almost unheard of. But Mash's reason is simple, if you're going to hit one, why not hit two? These words ignite the farman's anger, and he threatens to use magic to teach Mash a lesson. However, before he can finish his sentence, he's hit in the face with mud by Mash. It turns out Mash has already dug a big hole in the ground, and before Farman can react, Mash lifts him overhead and slams him into the prepared pit. Farman shouts at Mash, asking what he is doing. Mash responds that he is burying the vice principal, and he explains that just as the vice principal can expel him at any time, he can bury him at any time. Even if he's thrown in jail or left with only half a body, he'll crawl to bury him. Farman is utterly terrified, and Mash continues to furiously shovel dirt into the hole, completely ignoring the Farman's wails. Mash is quickly brought before the school principal Wahlberg. Wahlberg informs him that the Bureau of Magic is demanding his immediate expulsion from the school. The Bureau of Magic serves as the highest legal authority in this magic world. The core members of this organization are divine visionaries. Mash has done something unthinkable by hitting the son of a high-ranking official in the bureau. Just when Mash thinks he will be expelled, Wahlberg suddenly declares that if someone like Mash were truly expelled, the world wouldn't need to exist anymore. It turns out Wahlberg has been unhappy with the world's structure all along and believes that Mash's sense of justice shouldn't be crushed. Power and authority shouldn't revolve around selfish people. So, Wahlberg makes a decision. He will train Mash to become a divine visionary, allowing him to enter the Magic Bureau and change the world. However, becoming a divine visionary is not easy. First, Mash must become the top student in the academy, acquiring gold coins through various classes and school activities. But before the principal can even finish explaining, Mash's brain freezes up. It's clear that this information is too much for him to digest, since he's a physically strong but simple-minded young man. The principal is quite exasperated. He sums it up simply by stating that all Mash needs to do is perform well in school activities and classes. Walbert will handle the issues with the vice principal and the magic bureau. After this event, Mash becomes a prominent figure in the academy. One day, Mash is approached by an older student named Tom. Tom wants to invite Mash to participate in a duello match, a competitive game played on brooms. Even though Mash emphasizes that he can't ride a broom, Tom doesn't give him a chance to refuse. So, reluctantly, Mash steps onto the playing field. But when everyone is fiercely competing in the air, the spectators notice something wrong. There's a guy sitting on the ground not moving. They think Mash doesn't want to play, and they shout for him to leave, even throwing things at him. Tom flies over on his broom to encourage Mash. But suddenly, Tom is knocked to the ground by another player who claims it was an accident. This blatant taunting completely angers Mash. To everyone's amazement, Mash jumps into the air, and though he doesn't know magic, he stays aloft by moving his legs faster than gravity. He grabs the ball from a teammate, and an opponent comes to snatch it from him. But Mash simply flicks the ball lightly, and with just a strong gust of wind, sends his opponent flying. The ball sails through the air and scores a direct hit on the goal. Mash's team earns a point, but they are still 49 points behind their opponents. Time is running out. Can they win? Unexpectedly, after passing through the goal, the ball turns around and heads back to Mash. With his powerful fingers, he shoots another perfect curveball. Witnessing this terrifying scene, the opponents finally realize Mash's strength. One after another, Mash shoots balls that automatically change direction, winning the match with an incredible 999 points. He earns his first silver coin, making Tom proud. A student named Lance Crown sees Mash gains a silver coin and approaches him the next day. Lemon recognizes Lance as the person who ranked first in the entrance exam. He opens a magical bottle, and suddenly, Lemon, Finn and Tom disappear. They've been trapped inside the bottle by Lance. Before leaving, Lance coldly tells Mash to go to the nearby forest if he wants to save them. Mash heads to the forest, questioning Lance's motives, only to find out that Lance is after his silver coin. Lance shows that he has two silver coins and tells Mash that they should have a match and bet their silver coins. Tom feels something isn't right. Lance's face shows two magical marks. And in their world, almost everyone has only one mark. Having two marks is extremely rare. Mash agrees to fight Lance to save his friend. Lance releases a spell called Graviol that is a gravity-based personal magic to clear the area. Mash tries to rush forward to punch Lance, but Lance uses Graviol to hold Mash down. Lance claims that human strength can't resist this gravity, but suddenly, the ground cracks open. Mash pulls out a tree root from the ground and attacks Lance with it. Lance is feeling a bit desperate at the sight of Mash's strength, but he didn't expect to find himself kneeling on the ground. Mash punches Lance fast, 
making him retreat. Lance's necklace falls on the ground, and Mash picks it up to find a picture of a little girl inside. Mash believes that Lance a lilicon. Lance explains that his strong affection is only for his own little sister. Feeling like he can't beat Mash, Lance decides to use a dirty trick. He wants to throw a bow containing three people off a cliff and use gravity magic to accelerate it. Mash will surely jump down to catch the bottle, and Lance will use that moment to attack him. It's a low move, but Lance will do anything to defeat Mash. Lance remembers a time when he was with his little sister, Anna. One day, after a fight with some bullies, she finds her brother all beaten up. She's worried and quickly uses her magic to heal him. Even though she doesn't like it when her brother fights with others, she understands why he did it this time. She knows that he had beaten up the bullies to save a kid, so she forgives her brother for fighting. Anna loves him for being kind, even if he's a little clumsy sometimes. One day, Anna becomes sick with a disease that has no cure. The illness will take away her magical mark and powers, and the doctors say she has no more than five years to live. When Lance's parents hear this, they say that if she loses her magic, they'll have to give her to the government. Lance becomes very angry at them for thinking this way. He swears to become a divine visionary and enters the Bureau of Magic to reform the corrupt magical system. That's why he's so eager to get all the coins. He looks at Mash, wondering how he plans to save his friends. Mash is warming up, his muscles growing. Then Mash mentions a thigh magic spell, something Lance has never heard of. Mash then uses Big Bang Dash and dashes down the cliff, returning with the bottle in a few seconds. Lance is shocked, realizing that Mash's speed is that of light. But he can't back down for his sister's sake. However, Mash says he doesn't want to fight anymore. He feels that Lance isn't a bad person because the bottle is empty. Lance isn't really trying to hurt those three people in the bottle. Mash quickly goes up to Lance and searches him, finding the Real bottle where his friends are trapped. Lance is puzzled and asks why Mash wants to stop when he could win silver coins. Mash tells Lance that he's too clumsy to make clear decisions about everything. When Lance hears the word, clumsy, it makes him think of his sister. She used to call him clumsy too, and he misses how she would care for him and not fight with others. Thinking about his sister, Lance agrees to stop. He leaves, but not before reminding Mash that they made a bet, and he hands him a silver coin. Mash then frees his friends Tom, Lemon, and Finn from the bottle. One day, Mash is chatting with Finn in their dorm room. Since the start of school, Mash has collected two silver coins. Five silver coins make one gold coin. He only needs three more to exchange for a gold coin. Finn suddenly remembers that they haven't completed their homework assignment, and panic sets in. Just then, Lance enters their dorm. Ever since he had a fight with Mash, his impression of Mash has changed. He leads the two to the kitchen for their homework assignment, making a crying carrot stop weeping. Lance demonstrates how to do it with his magic, and the carrot stops crying instantly. When it's Mash's turn, he mumbles some spells at the carrot, but it panics and grows in size and seems like it will explode. Mash slaps it, and it instantly quiets down and falls to the ground. Lance picks up the sleeping carrot and turns it into a delicious dish. Mash tries to replicate the process but ends up turning the carrot into a cream puff, leaving Lance stunned. Lance tries to teach Mash again, but the result is still a cream puff. They eventually become friends, but Lance vows never to lose to Mash again because he must become Divine Visionary and enter the Bureau of Magic for his sister. The next day, Mash and friends arrive in a dense forest for their class. A noisy man named Dot bursts out, claiming to be the world's protagonist. He notices Mash standing nearby and proclaims that despite everyone talking about Mash recently, he is now just a supporting character. Dot insists that he alone is the hero of this world. At that moment, Lemon walks over to cheer on Mash. Dot, witnessing this scene, is stunned. His face turns red with rage, and he spits at Mash. He hates boys who are admired by girls. In this world, the ratio of boys to girls is one to one, but no girls seem to like Dot. He believes the root cause of this problem is the existence of attractive boys like Mash. Dot declares that as soon as he enters the Bureau of Magic, he will create a world without any handsome guys. Mash and his friends, however, simply ignore Dot. Meanwhile, the class assignment begins. They are going on a joint field trip between Adler and Lang dormitories to remove forest scorpions. They must collect the stones on the scorpions' foreheads to exchange for corresponding coins. Most stones are worth bronze coins, but a few strong ones with square stones are worth silver coins. Suddenly, silver iron from Lang appears behind Mash, accusing him of being conceited. He uses his magic called Iron Fist to strike Mash in the abdomen. The teachers notice and intervene, but Silva claims it was just 
just a joke. Masha's face remains stern, and Silva takes delight in seeing this serious expression. That's precisely the reaction he wanted. Lance explains to Mash that Silva was held back a year for injuring a teacher he didn't like, so it's best not to argue with him. Mash pulls out a cream puff he had hidden, relieved that it didn't get crushed. Lance realizes that Mash's serious expression earlier was all because of the cream puff. Afterwards, the two of them walk into the forest. But when Lance looks back, he realizes that Mash is already gone. They'd become separated. At that moment, Mash runs into Dot, who he finds really annoying. Mash doesn't hesitate to slap him. Dot is immediately furious, ready to take down Mash right then and there. But then, they hear a noise. A man is bullying a girl named Lauren. Quick to act. Dot uses his explosion-based magic called Explom to knock the man down and save her. Lauren thanks Dot, and he tries to act cool, but then she takes his hand, and her cute expression makes his heart race. Dot can't help but fall for her. Meanwhile, Silva has hunted down a scorpion in the forest, and is plotting something evil. Soon, they all rest in the forest, where the girl's gentle touch on Dot's knee makes him lose his cool. He tries to calm down, but can't resist her charm. But it turns out, this is all part of her magic. Just one glance at her charm can make someone fall in love with her. She tries it on Mash, but he doesn't react at all. This leaves her stunned. She continues her attack on Dot, who is already smitten. She tells Dot she's being threatened by Silva, who's been bothering her. Tears stream down her face, and Dot vows to beat Silva up. Silva then shows up, wondering who's going to take him down. Dot stands up, ready to take him on. He uses his explom magic to bomb Silva. At that moment, Silva realizes that Dot is not to be taken lightly. Dot then casts machine gun explom, creating multiple exploding fireballs. Dot is filled with confidence and thinks he has defeated Silva. But when the smoke clears, Silva has cast his own magic, creating masses of iron to protect himself. He boasts, saying that Dot's weak magic can't break through his defenses. He then casts Iron Fist, landing a heavy blow on Dot. The flying iron even knocks the cream puff out of Mash's hand, and Dot falls to the ground. Silva is triumphant, taunting him for how he's changed from wanting to defeat him to this pitiful state. Silva then says that if he can endure his five magical attacks, he will let them go. Dot is about to agree when Silva says that Mash must also endure five attacks. Thinking Mash is weak, Dot hesitates but then says he'll take on Mash's share, enduring a total of ten attacks. Silva mocks Dot for his foolish bravery but wastes no time. Masses of iron rise from the ground, and a huge impact makes Dot spit out blood. The second blow follows, then the third, and Dot's blood keeps flowing, but he refuses to give up. After nine hits, Dot still stands up. Silva is angry at the sight and uses Iron Fist again. After enduring ten attacks, an injured and near-death Dot struggles to stand and asks Silva to keep his promise and let them go. Silva bursts into laughter, not planning to keep his word at all. Dot can only ask Mash to escape with the girl, but before he can even finish his sentence, he's sent flying by another attack. What shocks him even more is finding out that Lauren is actually in league with Silva. The person he fought so hard to protect has been deceiving him all along. Suddenly, a pastry flies into Silva's mouth. Mash challenges him, ready to take on his ten attacks. Silva's anger boils over. He hates people like Mash, who act like heroes but are really weak. Without wasting words, Mash launches his attack. His wand swings, an iron fist bursts from the ground. Silva mocks Mash, thinking he can't defeat him. He brags about his achievements, getting two gold coins in his first year and reaching top levels in his second year. Suddenly, Iron Fist is caught in Mash's hand. Three seconds is all it takes for Mash to see through all the attacks. Mash stretches out his palm and launches a triceps magic ballista knuckle, landing a punch right on Silva's face. Silva's face shows disbelief. How could he, one of the best even in the second grade, lose to a newcomer? In his fury, Silva releases all his magical power but is defeated by a single punch from Mash. Beads of sweat roll down Silva's cheeks, and a strong fear sets in. Just when Silva thinks he's done for, a giant scorpion with a star-shaped stone on its forehead appears, worth more than a silver coin. Silva plans to sneak away while the scorpion battles Mash, but Mash punches the creature away with a single blow. Mash says I'm busy right now, sorry. Mash suggests that they should stop this, as he begins to feel sympathy for Silva. Silva's pride is shattered completely. Mash turns his head towards Lauren. She continues to play innocent, hoping to win favor. But Mash sees through her act, and without a word, he delivers a tremendous back throw. The huge impact almost bursts Lauren's eyes, 
After this event, Dot's perception of Mash changes entirely, and he becomes his ally. It's not long before Lance arrives with Finn and others. Lance tells Mash about Lang Dormitory's plan to target their dormitory, Adler, in pursuit of coins. Silva had targeted Mash because of his possession of a silver coin. Unlike ordinary people, all the students in Lang Dormitory come from noble families. They're really proud of their backgrounds, and they think it makes them special. They will do anything they can to stop the students from the Alder Dorm, who they think are of low bloodline, from getting into the Bureau of Magic. The leader of Lang Dormitory, Abel Walker, has three magical marks. He and six others have formed an organization called the Seven Magic Fangs, where each member possesses terrifying strength. Since Mash defeated a strong scorpion, Mash gets more silver coins and they make a gold coin. Lance has warned Mash to avoid the Lang Dormitory when he's alone. But the next day, Mash somehow loses his way and ends up at the stronghold of the Seven Magic Fangs. Inside, Silva is begging Abel to forgive his failure. Abel, however, is uninterested in his pleas. Within moments, Silva is transformed into a puppet, and he joins other puppets in line. At this moment, Mash, not knowing whether to push or pull the door, instead breaks it down, holding the door while apologizing. As the head of Lang Dormitory, Abel recognizes Mash. Having a freshman with a gold coin is quite unusual. Instead of attacking Mash right away, Abel asks him why he wants to become a divine visionary. Mash replies that he wants to live a peaceful life with his family. Abel then explains that divine visionaries are special helpers chosen by God to do big and important things. If Abel can become one of these helpers, he believes he can fix the world and make it the way it's supposed to be. He tells Mash that people used to act like wild animals, where the strong took what they wanted from the weak. But now, people are trying to be nice to each other and make sure everyone is treated fairly. Abel doesn't seem to like this new way of thinking. He thinks that it's natural for strong people to take control. Mash listens carefully and thinks he understands what Abel is saying. He thinks Abel just wants to live in a peaceful world, like him. But Abel misunderstands Mash and thinks he's being unfriendly. Abel seems tired of talking and makes an offer to Mash. Just give him the gold coin and he'll forgive Mash for trespassing. Mash refuses. Abel doesn't take kindly to that and commands his Silva's puppet to attack Mash. The puppet is slow and Mash easily dodges its spinning kick. With a swift move, he traps the puppet's head between his feet and smashes it to the ground. In doing so, he accidentally breaks the thread controlling the puppet, allowing it to revert to its original form. Abel quickly summons a six-armed puppet behind Mash. It grabs Mash's arms and pulls the gold coin from his pocket. With a flick, the coin is sent into Abel's hand. Content with the coin, Abel orders the puppet to toss Mash out. Mash, however, doesn't seem interested in getting the coin back and instead focuses on helping the unconscious Silva. Abel lets Mash go, but something doesn't feel right. He suddenly notices a missing button on the puppet that had held Mash. Examining the coin in his hand, he finds it's actually the puppet's button. Abel's minion love cute witnesses an incredible sight. In the moment the puppet flicked the coin, Mash had used his mouth to tear off a button from the puppet and spat it out with such force that it struck the coin in midair. He then sucked the flying coin back to him using his breath. Though they didn't get the coin from Mash, Abel's Lang Dormitory still leads in the number of gold coins. They've been raiding other dormitories for gold coins since the beginning of the school year. There are three dorms in the school, Lang, Adler, and Orca. The students in Orca's dormitory don't care much about becoming divine visionary. This is because they are all intelligent magicians who are deeply immersed in research. As punishment for recent fights and damage to school property, Mash is assigned to clean the Owl House. His friend Lance helps, concerned about recent unrest and Mash's possession of Adla's only gold coin. Suddenly, Seven Magic Fangs' sixth and seventh fangs come here and attack with magical spells. Mash is pulled underground by Olor's sea magic. Olor shouts the spell, Sea Shark, and transforms into a shark. Then, he dives into the water. Seeing this, Ansa starts his attack. He throws a big shuriken at Lance, but Lance easily dodges it. Lance gets ready to strike back with gravity magic but notices an owl behind Answer. Thinking of his sister Anna, who loves animals, Lance hesitates to attack. While hesitating, Lance gets scratched on the face by Answer's shuriken. Answer sees Lance not moving and becomes even more reckless. He throws two shurikens at Lance, 
who could easily dodge but doesn't because of the cute owl behind him. He takes the hit with his body. Ansa becomes a bit arrogant, and Lance uses his gravity magic to make a shovel fall. It breaks a bag full of owl food, and all the owls gather around. Ansa thinks Lance is looking down on him and throws three shurikens. But something feels wrong. He turns around and sees the owls all together. Now that the owls are safe, Lance doesn't hesitate and uses Graviol to crush Ansa and his flying shurikens. The fight ends so quickly that Ansa can't even react. He's in disbelief and asks why Lance is so great. Lance says that someone who only fights for themselves is nothing compared to his determination to save his sister. Meanwhile, Olor, who has transformed into a shark, is still looking for Mash in the water. Suddenly, a fast current sweeps by him, and he's stunned. He thinks he sees Mash swimming past him but believes it's an illusion. Mash swims back to show him clearly, and Olor is completely confused. Mash is swimming faster than him. With no choice, Olor uses the magic sea shark evolution to enhance his skills. He glows red and turns into a deep sea monster. But before he can finish saying that no one can stop him now, Mash punches him out of the water. Looking at the two defeated fangs, Lance doesn't hesitate to take their gold coin. Certainly. Just then, the door suddenly opens. A shadowy figure flashes by, instantly appearing behind them. Lance immediately wants to use his gravity magic to restrain the person, but as he starts, he discovers that he can't use his magic at all. Seeing this, Mash takes off his shirt and quickly charges towards the masked man. He swings a fast straight punch, but it's dodged by the masked man. The masked man is the second Fong. His main purpose for coming is to see the strength of Adler's dormitory, and he also takes the opportunity to retrieve his two companions. Since he's achieved his goal, he decides to leave, but he doesn't get far before cracks appear on his mask. Mash's punch didn't actually hit him, but the force of the punch as it whooshed by was enough to cause damage. He realizes that if the punch had truly hit, it probably would have killed him with one blow. Something really strange has been happening at school lately. Every night, some students walk like dolls to a certain place, and by the time they wake up, they temporarily lose their magic. Even Tom, who's always been full of energy, now looks worn out. In his memory, he feels like he had a dream where he was trapped in a dark box, unable to speak, but aware of everything. This situation lasted for hours, and when he woke up, he found he temporarily lost his magic anymore. It's as if all his magical power was drained out. Making matters worse, the principal's been called away to the Bureau of Magic so he couldn't handle the situation. Lemon, hearing about this, is dripping in cold sweat. She hands over a lucky charm to Mash, shaped like a cream puff pastry, hoping it'll keep him safe. As the night falls deep, Lance and the others start to suspect that the strange happenings at school might be the work of the Seven Magic Fangs. They decide to investigate. As the four of them walk down the dim hallways, they spot Lemon. Dot's about to call out to her, but Lance's hand clamps over his mouth. Something feels wrong, and a chill runs down Lance's spine. They watch as Lemon's body suddenly stiffens, twisting in an unnatural way. She moves like a puppet on strings, her movements jerky and strange. Finn is scared out of his wits, and Lemon seems to hear something, but luckily they hide in time. They decide to follow her but lose sight of her around a corner. Finn then hears a strange noise, and Lance reveals a hidden door using a spell. Dot tries to force it open, but Mash cleverly uses a statue and a lever to open the underground door. Inside, they stumble upon an ancient arena. Shuin Getsuku from Lang Dorm suddenly appears. He's not part of the Seven Magic Fangs but has been placed there to deal with intruders. They must bet the gold coin to challenge him, and Dot is eager since he dislikes handsome men who attract all the beautiful women. Dot attacks with his explosion magic. Shun's magic wand turns into a rose whip and blocks Dot's attack with ease. He lashes out with the rose whip, striking back at Dot. Dot barely dodges the attack a near miss that leaves him breathing hard. Shuin knows that they have beaten Silva before and claims to be stronger than Silva, but Dot confidently says for sure he can win against Shuin. Instead of attacking Shuin, he places eight magical markers around him. Dot warns his opponent not to move carelessly. He reveals that he's cast a conditional spell called Explom Bomb. This spell is no joke. It's five times more powerful than regular magic. Shuin, however, isn't easily intimidated. He scoffs at Dot's warning, confident that he won't fall for such traps. He unleashes a massive attack, his rose whip swirling like a storm. Dot's magic seems weak in comparison, almost hopeless. In no time, the rose whip wraps around him, lifting him high, its thorns sharp and biting into his flesh. Dot's screams fill the arena, a sound of pain and desperation. Shun lifts Dot, 
ready to throw him down. But Dot reveals his clever trick. He never actually said the bombs would only go off if stepped on, and since the rose whip is over one of the bomb marks, the bomb explodes. Dot tells Shun that the explom bomb is a time bomb, and sets off the rest of the bombs. Even as Shun is defeated, he strikes a cool pose. Just then, the ground beneath them turns into mud, and they're being sucked down. Mash is desperately looking for someone to rescue his cream puff. During their descent, the protagonist is busy eating a cream puff while also protecting his hairstyle. It seems the enemy wants to separate them and defeat them one by one. Lance lands and senses a powerful magic. Entering the scene is worth mad, the third of the seven magic fangs. Though he'd rather face Mash, he thinks Lance, a first-year student with two magical marks, isn't a bad opponent either. Meanwhile, Dot and Finn land, with Finn taking a hard fall. When he opens his eyes, he sees Love Cute and Milo Genius, the fifth and fourth of the seven magic fangs. Seeing that they both have two magical marks, Finn quickly gives up. Dot, however, remains calm, even throwing down a challenge, promising to show them the power of the main character against mere supporting roles. At the same time, Mash finally lands and looks around, curious about where everyone has gone. Suddenly, he hears a noise behind him, and as he turns around, everything lights up. His opponent is the second of the seven magic fangs, Abyss Razor. Abyss already knows from their previous encounter that Mash doesn't use magic. Mash becomes nervous when he realizes this, but Abyss reassures him, saying that they are both rejected by the world, and each has their own secrets. As Abyss speaks, he raises his blade, ready to fight. The battle to rescue Lemon, with Mash and the others against the seven magic fangs, is about to begin. On the other side, the principal arrives at the magic bureau. He's been called there for a very urgent reason. Six dangerous death row criminals have escaped from prison, and it's no ordinary breakout. Assisting them in this daring escape is Innocent Zero. Innocent Zero isn't just a name. It's a criminal organization led by the mysterious figure also known as Innocent Zero. Abyss is super fast with his speed-based magic called Accelerase, and he's able to land several hits on Mash. Abyss taunts Mash, telling him he doesn't have a chance, but Mash doesn't care. Abyss takes out a device that has Lemon inside. He explains that it drains magic power, and in 30 minutes, Lemon will lose all of her magic power. Abyss thinks this will make Mash happy since his friend will be like him, but Mash says if Abyss really means that, he'll beat him up. The battle continues, and Abyss uses Accelerate Sphere, attacking Mash from all sides. He even stabs Mash in the stomach, but Mash clenches his muscles and holds the sword. He headbutts Abyss, breaking his mask. Upon seeing Abyss's red eye, Mash mistakenly thinks he has caused Abyss's eye to swell up, and he quickly apologizes. Abyss is surprised that Mash doesn't know about his red eye, which is called Evil Eye. It temporarily stops people's magic. He's been feared his whole life because of it, even by his own parents. That's why Abyss believes he and Mash, who can't use magic, are alike. They both have been rejected by the world. Abyss uses another move that surrounds them in a force field. Surrounding Mash, arrow-like barriers suddenly appear. Within this force field, Abyss has the power to infinitely increase his own speed while simultaneously slowing down his enemies. The speed that's taken away from his opponents gets added to Abyss's own, making him even faster and more formidable. Abyss moves quickly, circling Mash and attacking him. Mash can only passively endure the attacks. Just as Abyss prepares to deliver his final powerful blow, Mash controls his muscles and sends a direct punch to the ground. The ground cracks open, limiting Abyss's movement. Abyss temporarily retreats and adjusts his position. Seizing this opportunity, Mash charges forward and smashes Abyss's sword with a single punch. Then he steps on Abyss, preventing him from moving, and lands a second punch, sending him flying out of the force field. Mash uses various muscles, such as his forearm, quadriceps, and chest muscles to start beating Abyss. Abyss fights back, but he's no match for Mash's speed, and soon he's defeated. Abyss acknowledges Mash's strength. Abyss kindly warns Mash not to continue forward, as Abel is not someone Mash can handle at the moment. But Mash thanks him and says he has to beat Abel. Mash tells Abyss that no matter if the whole world rejects him for his evil eye, or how people may speak ill of him, he still wants to be friends with Abyss. On the other side, Lance is fighting Worth. Lance immediately uses gravity magic, only to find that Worth turns into a puddle of mud and then disappears. 
As Lance carefully scans his surroundings, Worth suddenly appears behind him. He creates multiple clones and charge at Lance, who quickly counters with gravity magic. But it only hits mud, leaving Lance feeling a bit helpless. Worth uses the mud to form sharp spikes to attack Lance, but luckily, Lance reacts quickly. While dodging, he realizes he must strike Worth's real body, so he uses wide-range gravity magic. However, it's still ineffective. Worth appears behind him, and Lance's feet are stuck in the mud. Unable to move, Lance is attacked by mud balls from Worth, leaving him badly injured. But Worth doesn't continue the assault. Instead, he invites Lance to join the The Seven Magic Fangs. He warns Lance that if he continues to associate with the trash in Adler Dorm, he will eventually become trash too. He boasts about the seven magic fangs topped her education and magical tools that could maximize Lance's potential. But Lance is unimpressed, believing that real strength comes from inner fortitude. He tries to slam Worth into a wall with horizontal gravity magic but fails to injure him. It turns out that Worth has prepared mud all around to absorb shocks. Unless Lance figures out this trick, he can harm Worth. In a sudden move, Lance starts shooting rubble at the walls, forcing Worth to reveal himself. Worth is surprised and a bit worried. It looks like Lance might have figured out his special trick, but he can't let that get him down, and he wants to show he's still strong. Worth quickly pulls out a bottle of magical potion. It's a concentrated liquid of magical energy, extracted from other students, and only the members of Seven Magic Fangs have access to it. After drinking it, his magical power surges to a new level. Worth starts to chant a powerful spell called Madoro's Second Madoro Devilus. He summons a big, scary mud demon. Worth explains that magic is kind of like a big staircase. At the bottom step, you have basic magic that almost anyone can learn. On the next step, there's personal magic that's unique to each person. Then, you climb up to more complicated magic called conditional magic. But the second magic is higher tier magic. Only a few special magicians with two magical marks on their faces called double liners are able to use it. Other single liners can't cast this strong magic. Worth is proud to show that he's one of the few who can do second magic. Worth's father has taught him from a young age that a person's worth is determined by their magical ability. Sneering at Lance, Worth tells him that he'll never reach this level of magic, hanging out with those worthless friends. Just then, the mud demon's hand swings at Lance, but he dodges it with a swift move. Lance glares at Worth, clearly angry at the insult to his friends. Lance uses Graviol's second torture pole. Pillars rise around the mud demon, Madoro Devilus. Each of these pillars produces a powerful gravitational force, pulling the monster from all sides. Trapped by the relentless gravity, Worth's once proud demon is easily defeated. Worth is stunned, unable to accept that he has lost. He feels like he's worthless because his parents once told him that a person's value is determined by their magical abilities. Losing this battle has shaken him. In that moment of self-doubt, Lance returns a dropped book to Worth. It's a well-worn reference book. Worth sees in Lance's eyes and understanding. Their lives are not not so different after all, both pressured by parents who value talent and status above all else. But Lance doesn't agree with his family's viewpoint. Influenced by his sister, he believes that determination and hard work are what truly matter. While he doesn't agree with Worth's actions, he acknowledges his effort. Lance's words touch Worth. Elsewhere, Milo decides to leave things to love. Seeing that the two opponents are single liners, love starts to become quite arrogant. She even asks if others like her. Doubt responds, telling her that he already has Lemon, his future fiancé, and he's very sorry, but he can't marry her. This angers love immediately, and she launches a spiral windstorm spell at him. Quick to react, Dot uses his own magic explom to counter it, but this attack makes him realize there's a clear power difference between himself and Love, who has two magical marks on her face. Love, not willing to give up, asks Dot again if she is cute. Dot repeats he has Lemon, and Love attacks him. To Love, a girl is born a princess, and it's fine to eliminate any boy who doesn't appreciate her that's what her father told her. Angry, Dot uses explom to counterattack but Love doesn't seem bothered by it. Dot intentionally aims in front of Love to block her vision, planning to snatch Love's magic wand while she's distracted. Unfortunately, she sees through it, and she hits him again with her magic. Love then reveals a startling fact. Milo has the ability to turn a specific person into stone, more precisely, the person who opened the underground door. It will take effect in about two hours, meaning that if they can't defeat her and face Milo within 30 minutes, their friend Mash will be turned into stone. Love is 
very confident, stating that she will trap Dot with a spell called Tornigus Cage, a storm he won't be able to escape. She mocks Mash for having such a weak friend like Dot. In the storm, Dot is in extreme pain, barely able to breathe, and he remembers how he was bullied as a child and never fought back. His sister used to help him and chide him for his lack of spine. She warned that this attitude would be a problem when he found a real friend who cared for him. Dot then recalls how he was mocked by others and how Mash got angry for him. At this moment, Love plans to attack Finn, but Dot breaks her tornado magic, stunning her. She again attacks, but Dot blocks easily. His magical power has dramatically increased. Love suddenly sees a cross on his forehead, the Warding Cross a mark of battle demons that unleash their magical power when their emotions reach a certain level. Love is sweating with fear. For Dot, the sin of mocking Mash is grave, as his relationship with Mash goes beyond mere friendship. He controls energy balls and sends them toward Love like missiles. Explosions are continuous, and soon the entire dueling field is covered in smoke. When the smoke clears, Love is unharmed. Dot purposely misses all shots, saying he doesn't like picking on girls, and asks her to leave. Upon hearing this, Love instantly becomes a fan, crying with gratitude, while Dot grins widely, quickly recovering his usual cheerful demeanor. Suddenly a stone statue jumps out behind Finn. Dot jumps forward and stops the statue's attack. It's a brave move, but Dot is badly hurt. Milo is really mad at Love, blaming her for not able to deal with two single liners. Feeling guilty, Love quickly apologizes. Dot realizes that Milo has stopped using his petrification spell. Instead, he's now preparing to attack them. Milo creates multiple huge stone hands that are ready to strike Dot and Finn. Because of a harsh attack that Dot suffered earlier, he's not in the best shape to fight back. And Milo isn't just anyone, he's a prodigy, the only first grader to become one of the seven magic gangs. It seems like Dot and Finn are doomed this time. But then, in the very next moment, something shocking happens. Milo is suddenly struck by a large, magical sword. He's sent flying through the air, coughing up blood. He's in disbelief, wondering how on earth someone could break his magic so easily. It's the divine visionary, Rain Ames, a top magician from Adler Dorm. Although he's become the divine visionary, Rain is still just a third grader. Milo tries to act casual, pretending to chat with Rain while secretly planning to attack him from behind. But Rain is way too smart for that. He sees right through Milo's plan in a split second. Rain creates countless swords in the air, all aimed at Milo. He tells Milo sternly not to waste his time. His strong display of magic makes Love think about switching sides and going over to Adler Dorm. Milo realizes he's totally outmatched and starts to beg for forgiveness, claiming that he was forced into this. But Rain doesn't buy any of it. He gives Milo a hard kick, and the fourth demon tooth almost throws up in fear. To Rain, what really really matters isn't words but actions. He's not going to listen to worthless talk from someone like Milo. And sometimes, a good beating is the only way to teach a lesson. Milo's screams fill the duel arena. Rain then tells everyone to get out of there. Love is the first to run, while Dot is left confused and wondering why the divine visionary would even show up here. But what shocks him even more is the realization that the divine visionary is Finn's older brother. Rain is busy investigating something important. Wahlberg has told him that some of Innocent Zero's followers might be around and he's been sent to find them. Rain stumbles upon Mash, who is munching on cream puffs. There's something about Mash that gives off a strong, intimidating feeling, and it leads Rain to think that he might be connected to Innocent Zero. To figure it out, Rain calls upon Arachnibus, a special creature that can gauge true magic power. By measuring Mash's magic, Rain will know if he's just a student or something more. Rain sends a large sword charging at Mash. Mash is forced back a few feet, but stops the sword effortlessly with just two fingers. Rain then turns to Arachnibus, asking if Mash used magic. Arachnibus, having measured countless magic users, is sweating bullets it's never seen anyone with zero magic before. Rain launches another attack using 3% partisan. Mash dodges all the swords and turns them into a chair. Again, Arachnibus reads zero magic. Rain's starting to understand now. Mash didn't use magic. He's not the invader he was warned about. But just to be on the safe side, Rain decides to test Mash once more, this time using 10% Partisan. The Arachnibus can't believe Rain is using this spell on a student and thinks Mash is finished. But then, Mash holds a sword like a baseball bat and knocks all the swords away. Now Rain is certain, Mash isn't an intruder. He asks his name, and upon hearing Mash, 
he remembers what the principal told him. There's a special student named Mash with an extraordinary situation and a strong inner self. He's asked to take good care of Mash. Rain apologizes for his earlier rudeness. He pulls out a magic handkerchief that heals wounds as a way to say sorry. Mash accepts happily, although he's puzzled by the rabbit pattern on it. Seeing Rain's serious face, Mash understands Rain must love rabbits. Rain knows Mash's desire to become a divine visionary and knows he'll likely face Abel. Abel's puppet magic is beyond most students, and Rain thinks Mash might find him tough to beat. But if Mash can win against Abel, he'll take all of Abel's coins, bringing him close to becoming a powerful candidate for divine visionary. The world of magic is filled with problems nowadays, and for Rain, having strong companions is essential. That's why he wants Mash to become a divine visionary, and upon hearing this, Mash agrees. As Rain leaves, he recalls the words of the principal. Mash is someone who values his friends more than himself. Later, Mash stands in front of a door. For once, he gets it right that the door is meant to be pushed, not pulled. But then, his face changes in an instant. He remembers the cream puff charm that Lemon gave him. Anger floods through him, and with a furious punch, he sends the door flying off its hinges. Abel is surprised by Mash. He thought only Rain had a chance against Abyss's evil eye, but Mash is really strong too. Abel starts talking about how not everyone is equal and says he doesn't want people with inferior genes that take advantage of strong people. Mash realizes Abel is talking about people without magic, and Abel says he wants to get rid of them, and he even wants to get rid of people who help and protect people with inferior genes. Mash remembers when he was little and how he was raised by his father. Abel's thoughts and plans have made Mash realize they're on opposite sides, and now they're going to fight. Love is watching the battle from behind a door. Abel sends out puppets to attack Mash. Mash quickly dodges them and finds out that these dolls are filled with corrosive acid. Mash grabs a doll's head and strikes it like a bowling ball, knocking down the rest of the puppets. Abel is astonished by Mash's skills, so he summons three clown dolls. But Mash's powerful punch shatters them easily. Mash states since the strong should have the right to take advantage of the weak, if he wins, Abel must tell him where Lemon is. Abel decides to teach Mash a lesson and uses thin threads to control Mash's own fist to punch himself. It seems like Abel can end Mash's life whenever he wants, but he wants to have a little fun first. Suddenly, a puppet of Finn appears, controlled by Abel. He warns Mash that if he fights back, Finn will be torn apart. Despite being attacked by Finn's puppet, Mash doesn't fight back. Abel grows tired of the game and tries to finish Mash, but Mash's muscles shatter Finn's iron axe. Mash pulls a gold coin from his pocket. He shoots the coin. It cuts Finn's threads and returns to Mash. Finn is freed and turns back to normal. Mash apologizes and explains that the coin seems to like him. Abel is angry. He tries to control Mash with the threads again. Abel believes that human power can't resist this control. Mash breaks free from the threads grasp. He runs up to Abel. He lands a powerful knee strike. Surprised, Abel uses Marionis change and turns Mash into a puppet but fails to get the gold coin he's after. Instead, he finds a cream puff. Mash punches Abel and takes back his cream puff. Abel is confused about how Mash broke free from his puppet spell. He realizes that Mash's muscles had an unconscious defense like a reflex to protect the cream puff. Abel then uses his strongest spell Marionis second, Harm Puppet. He summons a giant monster that can turn all humans within a 100 meter radius into puppets. If his invisible strings touch Mash, Mash start to change into a puppet right away. No sooner has he mentioned this, Abel quickly casts his magic. A puppet's giant hand instantly smashes towards Mash. Abel thinks he's got this battle won, but suddenly, the puppet falls apart, broken and disjointed. Abel can't believe what he's seeing, but Love, who is hiding nearby, sees it all very clearly. The moment Abel released the string, she noticed that Mash deliberately tilted his body. When the strings reached his left side, Mash took advantage of his right side still being free and instantly snapped all the threads. Mash moves quickly and gets behind Abel he grabs Abel and jumps up into the air. Then Mash flips Abel over and then smashes him headfirst into the ground. Then it reveals why Abel has been acting this way. It turns out that his mother was a very kind woman who used to give food to poor people. One day, a greedy man who wanted all the food for himself killed her with a sharp blade. That's why Abel dislikes ordinary people. Mash feels that Abel isn't all bad and might be doing everything for his mother. Abel keeps his promise and releases all the puppets. On the other side of the action, Rain starts to suspect Lance. 
He throws his sword at him, but it's immediately deflected. The magical readings from Arachnabus are off the charts. As his identity is uncovered, the man drops his disguise as a student and reveals his true form. Rain figures out that this man named Cell War is a member of Innocent Zero, and he wonders what he's doing here at the school. Cell explains that he's looking for something crucial to his group and that it's located within the school. They had sent Abel to find it, but he failed, so now Cell is on a mission to kill Abel. As Rain attempts to attack the man, he's stopped by a large knife. Another man named Jean-Pierre introduces himself as a serial killer and cannibal and will be Rain's opponent. Rain starts to worry about Mash, wondering if he'll be able to handle Cell, who is on a highly powerful divine visionary level. Meanwhile, Mash and his friends are celebrating their victory. Mash says he has to go to the bathroom. Right after Mash leaves, Cell shows up and shoves Lemon, Finn, and Dot aside. He walks up to Abel, notices his wounds, and mocks him for losing, but he thanks him for giving some valuable information about Wahlberg. Then, Cell uses his magic to make Abel start choking himself, saying he doesn't need him anymore. Just as Cell is about to use his magic to make Abel finish himself off, Mash, carrying a pile of cream puffs, walks into the room. A fly lands on Mash's face and starts doing push-ups. Unable to hold back a sneeze, Mash sneezes with such force that the cream puffs fly from his hands like bullets. Some of them strike Cell right on the head, transforming the previously tense atmosphere into something utterly awkward. This also infuriates Cell, who angrily throws the cream puff on the ground, making Mash quite upset. Cell is about to attack Mash, but suddenly, he feels a sharp pain in his head. He wonders if there is some connection between him and Mash. But looking at Mash's confused face, Cell thinks he overthinks and dismisses Mash as unimportant. Cell tries to attack Abel again. In the eyes of their organization, Innocent Zero, anyone without value must be eliminated. Cell uses his magic and creates a large spiked ball, aiming it at Abel. However, Abyss steps in front of Abel and takes the hit. Abyss apologizes to Mash, thinking he can't share cream puffs with him anymore. Mash doesn't say anything but takes out a magic handkerchief for Abyss. Meanwhile, Cell is deep in thought, wondering why his last attack didn't cause a fatal wound. He realizes that Mash threw a stone at him at just the right moment, which changed the path of the attack. Suddenly, Mash stomps on the ground, causing it to crack open, and picks up a small piece of broken stone. He throws it at Cell, who catches it. But then, in a surprising and mysterious move, Cell starts licking the stone. Cell tells Mash that he's rebellious, and asks if he's afraid that he might kill him too. Mash asks Cell why he is licking the stone, questioning if he's reached an age where he would do such a thing. Mash then says he is taking Abyss to the hospital, and threatens to beat Cell up if he tries to interfere. Cell doesn't care about Mash. Mash's words, stating that if Abyss doesn't get treatment within 30 minutes, he will die. This means Mash must defeat Cell within that time. Cell then starts using Carbo Rain, creating sharp carbon spikes to attack Abel. Mash, who has no magical powers, stands in front of Abyss and Abel and can only use his fists to fend off the attack. However, the number of spikes is too many, and Mash gets cut in several places. To make matters worse, the arrogant Cell sends a large sharp spike, directly hitting Mash with a heavy blow. Dodd is unable to go and help Mash, because that would leave Lemon and Finn unprotected. Abel feels very frustrated, saying they are at an absolute disadvantage and can never defeat Cell. He calls Abyss a fool for risking his life to protect him. Mash tells him that Abyss did this because Abel saved Abyss. Abyss had always been alone, feeling that life was painful because of his evil eye, so he must have been happy when he was needed by Abel. Mash's words remind Abel of his mother's advice. Although they were born into this world as people blessed by heaven, they should think from others' perspectives, which will make them a little gentler towards others. Abyss wakes up at this moment and shares his feelings with Abel. Because of his demon eye, everyone fears and hates him. It's Abel's presence that gives him the feeling of being alive, and it's Abel who lets him feel needed. He's willing to sacrifice his life to protect Abel. Abyss's words move Abel, and just as Mash can't withstand the attack, Abel finally takes action. Abel summons a giant puppet to block the attack from Mash. He proclaims that the strong exploiting the weak is a natural right, but the weak resisting the strong is also a birthright. Cell then uses Carbo Heavy Rain and defeats the giant puppet in an instant. However, Mash comes from one of the doll's heads and punches Cell. Cell is fine after the punch because he had a carbon layer on his skin, and notes that Mash is the first to break through it. Cell is very curious about what magic Mash used, and Mash says it's physical magic. Cell thinks Mash is lying and pulls out the spellflection mirror, causing everyone to be shocked. This mirror can reflect magic back, 
and the stronger the opponent's magic, the more powerful it becomes. Dot recognizes it as one of the most feared magical items and warns Mash not to fight it, as the mirror will reflect his spells and he will die. Meanwhile, Cell is still very smug, unaware of Mash's terror. Suddenly, Mash kicks and shatters the mirror, leaving everyone stunned by his unexpected move. They then realize that Mash's previous actions were not magic but were all achieved through physical strength. At the same time, Cell discovers an anomaly. His hand bears a mark after touching Mash. He realizes that Mash is the man sought by his organization and is happy to have finally found what he wanted. The space behind Cell starts to tear, revealing that he has hidden high-level magic. However, he chooses not to launch an attack, as finding Mash is his greatest gain. He then uses spatial magic to leave the area. Before leaving, Cell tells Mash that they will meet again soon. Watching the enemy leave, Mash finally breathes a sigh of relief. On the other side, thanks to the magical handkerchief he brought, Abyss is no longer in life-threatening danger. Though the incident has ended, Mash's real crisis is just beginning. Although everyone is willing to keep the secret that he doesn't know magic, this scene was witnessed by a student, who insists on reporting it to the school. However, Mash is not only unfazed but even starts eating cream puffs. Meanwhile, in a hidden place, Cell reports everything that happened to Innocent Zero, saying they have finally found what was lost. Innocent Zero declares that his long-held wish is about to be fulfilled and instructs Cell to capture Mash. That's it for Season 1. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to our channel as we will recap Season 2 once it's released.